So in this video today, I'm going to go over the week 14 practice and Mach 4 review. So number one says, are the triangles similar? If so, complete the similarity statements. Say how you know they are similar. <clears throat> so um, what we want to do first is say that we know that this angle B right here is congruent with that side because they're vertical angles, right? Then we're going to compare these sides. So we got a shorter side there and there. So we're going to go 27, divide that by 18. So that's going to be 9 goes into both of those, so 3 over 2. And so what we're looking for here, by the way, is, is the same ratio, right? If we get the same ratio, so this is our longer side, right? So we're going to do 36 and divide that by 24. And that also, both of those are divisible by 12, so this is going to be 3 over 2, okay? So we got the same ratio, right? So now what we want to do <clears throat> is... Um, we we see do you see angle side angle our side angle side so this is a side obviously that's an angle and this is a side so they are similar by side angle side okay um, so a b e is similar to um, what triangle so we started with the side at the end of the one tick so we're going to start here with d for the other side so d go to the center which was b and end with c okay so the next one um, hopefully you notice that we have some parallel lines here. That's what these symbols mean, parallel symbols, right? So that WV is similar with MN. So we should know that W is congruent with N. So angle W is congruent with angle N. Why? Because um, of alternate interior angles. And then we also know that V is congruent with M for the same reason. So the measure of angle V is congruent with angle F measure, measure of angle <clears throat> Sorry, um, M, okay? So these are similar by angle. Angle, so yes again. And WLV is similar to what angle? Or to what triangle, sorry. Um, so we started with one arc, went to nothing, and then to two. So we're going to start with one arc at N, go to nothing, which was L, and then go to two, which was M, okay? So our last one here, I noticed first of all that we got two triangles. We've got one, a big one and a little one, and we've got that this angle right here is congruent in both, right? Angle T. So also I noticed that this side right here is 22 of the big triangle, and that this side right here is 14. Well, and that's 22 because it's 11 plus 11, and 14 um, because 28 minus 14 is 14. Okay, so now we're going to see if we get the same ratios here. So I'm going to take my 7 over my 14. So 7 over 14 is equal to 1 half, okay? Then I'm going to take my next one, which is this 11, and I'm going to do it over the 22 right there, the whole side. So 11 over 22 is also equal to 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we have our 14 over our 28. <coughs> so that's also equal to 1 half. So, um, yes, we got the same ratio three times, didn't we, y'all? Got it one half, one half, one half, okay? So, <clears throat> because we got the same ratio three times, um, we can say that they are similar. And again, it's by, we did side, 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 didn't we? Isn't this a side comparison? This is a side comparison. This is a side comparison. So they were similar by side, side, side. And it was TED is similar, yes, to T U. W, V, right? T, U, V, okay? And um, they could all, we could have also used side angle side, right? Because we got a side and then we had the angle here that was congruent to itself, right? And then we had another side. So it could have been either one, okay? All right, so this next one says, are the triangles in each pair similar? If so, state how you know they are similar and if, so, if possible, the similarity ratio, okay? So this time, this is a side, a side, and an angle, whereas this is a side, an angle, and a side. So obviously, the answer is no here because they are not um, congruent by the same way or similar by the same way, sorry. So on the next one, number five, we're going to find the third angle. So we're going to add 45 to 100, 100 plus 45 excuse me, is 145, and then we're going to subtract that from 180. That's going to give us, what, 35, right? So this angle right here is 35. So hopefully you can see that this angle, S, would be 45, right? 
So we've got our 100. We already saw that, but we also got our 45 is congruent with our 45, right? So these are similar, yes, by angle, angle, because two of the angles, obviously all three were congruent, but we only need two to prove similarity. Okay, on this next one, um, we're going to talk about the two triangles. So we've got this triangle right here, and then we've got the one beside it. And I'm going to redraw it next to it, okay? so that you guys can see it as a separate triangle, okay? So we've got our 12, our 9, our 6, we've got our 6, our 8, and our 4. So we want to compare the smallest side to the smallest side, the biggest side to the biggest side, and the middle side to the middle side. So we're going to take our 12, that's our biggest side on the triangle on the left, and we're going to compare it with our 8. Again, when we reduce that, 4 goes into both, this is 3 over 2, right? So then we're going to take our middle side of the one on the left, that's 9, and the middle side on the one on the right is 6, yes? <clears throat> okay, so that's going to also, that 3 goes into both of those, so that's going to be 3 over 2 again. And then our smallest side of the one on the left is 6, and our biggest side, our smallest side of the one on the right is 4. 2 goes into both of those, so that's 3 over 2 again. So notice again, we got the same ratio three times. So these are similar by side, side, side. So yes. So most of us taught this concept in class um, with... Uh, showing a top over a bottom is equal to a top over a bottom, right? Like a number over a number. Okay, so first thing I want to do right here is find this length, that length right there, right? So that is going to be 12 minus 4, which is 8. Okay, so now um, we discovered a different way to show you all this. So we're going to do opposite sides. So this is going to be like step two of our normal solution problem. Okay, so we're going to, um, <clears throat> we're going to take the 4 and multiply it times the 12, 4 times 12, and that's going to be equal to our 8 times the 2x minus 8. Now, the only reason I'm curving this here, y'all, is because of the way this looks and it's just a little easier to see, right? So this is going to be 48 is equal to 16x minus 64. We're going to add 64 to both sides, so that's going to give us 112 is equal to 16. X divide both sides by 16, so X is equal to 7 here, okay? And remember, you can check that by putting that uh, 2 times 7 is 14 minus 8 is 6, right? So 6 over 12 is equal to 4 over 8, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good way to check it. Okay, this one over here, again, this section right here is 15, so we're going to go ahead and write that. So once again, we're going to cross multiply. This one's a little bit easier doing our axis, right? So we're going to go 10 times 15 is equal to 6. And we'll just make this x, OK? So that's going to be 150 equals 6x. And 6 goes into 150 25 times, right? So once again, you could check this, right? So 10 over 25, is that equal to 6? So 10 over 25, does that equal? 6 over 15. And yes, it does. So a great way to check it, okay? So here again, we're going to find this length right here first, and that's going to be 3. So once again, we're going to cross multiply. See that? So we're going to go 3 times 10 is equal to 5 times our x plus 2. So that's going to be 30 is equal to 5x plus 10. Subtract the 10 from both sides, that's 5x is equal to 20, so x is equal, we divide both sides by 5, so that's going to be x equal to 4, right? And what is <clears throat> 4 plus 2? That's equal to 6. So here again, we're going to say is 5 over 3 equal to 10 over 6. Hopefully all of y'all can see that, yes, it is, okay? So on this one, similar concept, we're going to cross multiply, okay? So let's turn that into x again, because you guys don't like question marks, so I have seen. 28 times 8 is equal to 14x. 28 times 8 is 224. So we're going to divide that by 14. So x here is equal to 16, right? So here again, um, we could compare this, right? So we could say uh, 16 over 14 is equal to, see this right here? 16 over 14 is equal to 28 over 14, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so once again, we're finding this length right here, 8, right? So we're going to subtract the 4 from the 12. We're going to cross multiply again. So this is going to be 8, whoops, 8 times, whoops, hmm, yeah, hold on. 
So eight. Okay, pen, write for me. I think it's nine, y'all. Eight times five is equal to four times x plus six. So that's going to be 40. I don't know what the pen is doing now, y'all, but it's not happy. And that's 4x plus 4 times 6 is 24. Subtract 24 from both sides. That's going to give us 16 is equal. Wow, I don't know what's going on. 4x. It's flashing, so maybe it's about to die. x is equal to 4. So I'm going to go ahead and put x down here, guys. Um, and then knowing that that's going to be my xc. So we're going to do cross multiplication again. So that's going to be 9x is equal to 6 times 12. So that's going to be 9x is equal to 72. And that means divide 72 by 9. So x is going to be equal to 8, which means rn. Yeah, so there. Let's go to this last two. Um, again, cross multiply right here. Okay, so this is going to be 4 times 10 is equal to, we could put an x where cy is, or we could just say 9 times cy, right? Divide both sides by 9 after we multiply by 40 times, 4 times 10, right? So we're going to divide both sides by 9. That's going to be my cy, sorry. Um, and so 40 divided by 9. It's going to be four point something. Four point, what is it? Four point four four? Yep. Four point four four. Okay. Then again, here we've got that cross multiplication, right? So we're going to do 10 times 50 is equal to 8 times Rn. So that's going to be 50, and we're going to divide that by 8, right? So Rn is going to be equal to. 6.25. Now remember, you can plug this back in there and check it, right? To make sure that when you cross multiply, they're equal to each other, okay? All right, <clears throat> so the properties of parallelogram. Let me go to my other sheet on this one. So I went ahead and wrote these out. So obviously, opposite sides are parallel. That's what this is. Opposite sides are congruent. That's what um, step two is. The diagonals bisect each other, which I didn't have a middle letter here. I could have put one, but that would mean that B to the center is congruent with D to the center. Um, and A to the center and C to the center are congruent, okay? Then um, this means that consecutive angles are supplementary. So you want to add A to B, that's 180. You want to add B to C, that's 180. You want to add C to D, that's 180. You want to add D to A, that's 180. And then opposite angles are congruent. So angle A and C are congruent, and B and D are congruent or equal, okay? Then um, we know that the diagonals are congruent in a rectangle. So AB, AC is congruent with BD. A, C, that should be B, D, y'all. Mm, let me fix that. Good catch, Michelle. Oh, let's go back and see if I can fix this. D, right? Okay, so that was um, one. And then the other one is that these angles are being bisected, right? So all, or sorry, all these angles are 90 degrees, okay? Then with the rhombus, all the sides are congruent. So A, B, and B, C, and C, D, and D, A are all congruent. Um, and then all the angles at intersection of AC and BD, so AC and BD are the diagonals, are 90 degrees. So all of these angles in the center there are 90. Then also <clears throat> the angles um, are bisected. So that means that BAC, that angle right there, is congruent with that angle right there because the angle is bisected. Same way down here. And then over here, these two angles are congruent because they are bisected. Then remember that a square has all the properties of a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus. So this is our proof completed. So GHIJ is a rhombus. That was given information right there. And then GHIJ is a parallelogram. That a rhombus is a parallelogram, right? So if it says a rhombus is a parallelogram, then we are just saying that GHIJ is a parallelogram. <clears throat> um, and uh, that's what a rhombus is, a parallelogram. Then we could say GH and JI are parallel, right? GH and IJ, these opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition of parallelogram, right? Then we got the angle 1 and 2, so these are alternate interior angles. That's why they are congruent. Then we've got angle 2 and 3 are congruent. Now remember, this is a rhombus, so that means that the diagonals in a rhombus bisect opposite angles. 
And then we have that one is congruent to three, and that's the transitive property. So we had one to two, two to three. So one to three is the transitive property. The middle angle, the repeated angle drops out, and we have three angles are congruent to each other. That's the transitive property. So number 16 says identify the transformation that would map the figure onto itself. So for this one, we would, um, for this one, this problem right here, we would reflect it over S, right? So it would be a reflection. Okay, pen. Over line S, okay? And then with this other one, we would have to rotate it around a center, right? So this would be a 180 degree rotation. So if we rotate it 180 degrees, then D would go where B is, right? So this is a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so are the two triangles similar? If so, how and what is the scale factor? So yes, we got congruent angles right there, right? We're going to compare our short side to our short side. So that's going to be 12 over 8, which reduces to be, 4 goes into both of those, 3 over 2. Then we're going to compare our long side to our long side. So that's going to be 24 over 16, and 8 goes into both of those. So that's, again, 3 over 2. So that is what tells us that these are similar, right? Now, the key, um, so yes, they are similar. And let's go ahead and say what triangle is similar to what triangle. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DFE, right? DFE. And the way I knew that was I was at the end of that one dot side, right? Okay. And away from that angle. <clears throat> okay, so now it asks for the scale factor. Now remember, the scale factor, so if we go from ABC, if we go this way, then can you tell that the shape's getting smaller? I can too. So that means our scale factor is going to be two-thirds, um, right? So if we go the opposite direction, though, if we go from DFE to ABC, so if we go, that's going to be two-thirds, right? If we go the opposite direction, if we go this direction, then it's going to be three over two. So it really matters what direction you're going, right? The the numbers are going to just flip if you're going the opposite direction, okay? And remember, a scale factor and a ratio are different, okay? But you can use one to find the other. All right, so the next one says identify similarity ratio and tr write a similarity statement, okay? So on this one, um, I'm going to write my similarity statement first. So notice we're going from two arcs to one to, no, two arcs to nothing to one. So we're going to go two arcs to nothing to one. So this is going to be x, z, y. We're going to do that first, okay? Then we're going to just compare a side. So we could do a, c, um, or let's just do a, b. a, b over what? x, z, okay? So a, b is 15 over x, z, which is 22.5. So if I simplify this, this is going to be two-thirds, okay? Um, and uh, we could have done a, c over xy, right? That would have been 16 over 24. 8 goes into both of those, so that's also two-thirds. Another way to just double check it, right? So our ratio is two-thirds, okay? Um, okay, so the next one actually gives us this statement, so we can use it. Um, so PQ maps to AB, right? So we can say 4 over PQ is going to be equal to, and let's go ahead and see if we got a pair of sides that actually have numbers. So notice this BC, BC maps to QR, right? So BC, QR, so that's 6 over 12. So again, you can cross multiply here, right? So that's going to be 6PQ is equal to 48. So PQ is equal to 8, right? So that 8 would go right there. Now, you should see a pattern at this point, right? So 4 times 2 is 8, 6 times 2 is 12. So you probably could guess that this is 14 down here, and it is. Um, but again, we could use our 6 over 12, and we could say that that's equal to 7 over our PR, right? So here again, we're going to cross multiply. So that's going to be 12 times 7 is 84 equals 6 PR. And when we divide 84 by 6, we get PR is equal to 14, okay? Now this next one, number 20, the big idea here is that angles don't dilate. So if angle B is 28, then angle E has to be 28, okay? All right, given the following coordinates, identify the scale factor if it's an enlargement or reduction, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're always going to do image, let's see if I can get my pen to work, image over pre-image, y'all. 
Okay, so we're just going to actually write this right here on the, um, <clears throat> so we're going to take the a prime, which is 3 comma 1, and we're going to put it over our a, okay? So our a was 6 comma 2. So we can create a ratio right here. You see that 1 half right there? That was what happened, okay? So just remember, you're always doing what you ended with over what you began with, okay? So this was what? A reduction, yes? Same thing over here with this one. So I'm going to use p this time. So we're going to use our p prime again. So that's going to be 3 comma 4.5, and we're going to put that over our p, which is going to be 2 comma 3. So all we have to do is look at that right there. So that's 3 over 2, which is the same as 1.5, okay? And obviously, this is a number greater than 1, so this is going to be an enlargement. Okay, apply the dilation D to the polygon with the given vertices, okay? So we're going to take the image again. Remember, image over pre-image, okay? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 8 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 2, right? Okay, let's double check the other side. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is 1, 2. So that's 2 as well. So if it's greater than 1, we know it's, first of all, we know it's a dilation because they are the same number, right? So yes, and it's an enlargement because it's greater than 1 and k was equal to 2. So let's look at this other one. So we got our a prime to d prime. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8 over 5. That is our width, right? And then let's just do our height. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2. Are those equal? No, they are not equal, right? So that means it's not a dilation. They have to be equal for it to be a dilation. All right, this next one says, given the points A, B, C, state the image points after the dilation by a scale factor of 2, followed by a reflection across the y-axis. So we're going to write our rules first. So our rules are going to be 2x, 2x, 2y, and then a reflection over the x-axis is going to be negative x, comma, y, okay? So we're going to go A prime and then uh, A double prime, okay? So our A prime is going to be 4, 2, and then our a double prime is going to be negative 4, 2, right? b prime, I'm going to multiply 2 times everything, right? So that's going to be 2, 6, and then we're just negating the um, x, right? So b double prime is going to be negative 2, 6, okay? Then c prime is going to be 8, 4, and so C double prime, sorry, is going to be negative 8, 4, okay? The next one says given points A, B, C, D, state the image point after the dilation by scale factor. So again, we're going to go to 1 half, sorry, X comma 1 half Y, okay? So, and then we're going to do this 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation, okay? So 270 counterclockwise is y comma negative x. So that's our rule, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and do our a and a prime again. So a prime is going to be half of negative 4 is negative 2 and 3, right? And then our a double prime is going to be 3, 2, because we're changing the sign of the x, right? Our b prime is going to be negative 1, 1, and our b double prime is going to be 1, comma, 1. Our c prime is going to be negative 3, 2. Our c double prime, again, we're going to flip it, so this is going to end up being 2, comma, 3, right? And change the sign of x. And then our d prime is going to be negative 3, 3, and our d double prime is going to be 3, 3. There we go. All right. This next one says identify the composition of transformations in detail. So the first thing I notice is that my new one is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to put 6 over 1, 2, 3. So 6 divided by 3. Remember, do an image over pre-image, right? So that means our dilation is by a scale factor of 3. So it's a dilation by 3, right? And then what else do you notice? 
Yep, it rotated. So this was a 90 degree rotation as well. Now I'm going to tell you all right now, I'm not going to do it here, but I would check to make sure I did that right. Okay. Um, by finding what that uh, new point is for A and um, then rotating that 90 degrees with the rule, right? The rule for a 90 degree rotation is negative Y comma X, right? Okay. So this next one, um, again, we're going to look where we ended, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is going to be 2 over 6. That's 1 third. So that's going to be a dilation by 1 third. Okay, now if we do that, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just do that with point B just to check, okay? So B is at 3, 3, right? No, sorry, negative 3, 3, okay? So B prime, if I just shrink it, right, by 3, that's going to be negative 1, 1. That would give my that would make my point right there, and that's not where B prime, B double prime is. So that means it's also going to move. Let's count. 1, 2, 3 to the right. So 3 right and 1 up, right? 1 up. Okay, so that's the other thing that happens to it, okay? And that rule would have been X plus 3 comma Y plus 1, right? All right, here's our last problem. So if D, E, and F are midpoints of A, B, C, what statements can be made? Now, first of all, you should know that these are mid-segments then, right? That we're talking about, okay? So B, F, B, F is congruent with A, E, and E, C, right? A, E, and E, C, okay? Let's see if I can erase some of this so I have a little more room to... So I fixed that if y'all saw, made that AE and EC, so it didn't look like an E to me. Okay, so then um, AC is this length right here, right y'all? See that length right there? That is the length we're about to talk about, okay? If I can get my pen to work. <laughs> AC, okay? So AC, could, we could say is AE plus EC, right? It's also equal to 2 times df, isn't it? 2df is also equal to ac. Oh, and also 2 times ae is equal to ac, and 2 times ec is equal to ac, right? Okay, so then this next part asks us, what is ef parallel to? So we're gonna, I'm gonna erase my lines and do this again. Okay, so this one says ef, EF right here, EF, what is it parallel to? So it's uh, it's parallel to all of this side, right? So truthfully, we could say it's parallel to AD, to DB, right? So EF is parallel to AB and AD and DB, right? So let's just do another one just for the sake of practice. So this time it said EF before, right? So it was that. So let's now talk about AC. So if we were talking about AC, oh, it's not supposed to be red, but say la vie. If we were talking about AC, what is it parallel with? It's parallel with DF, right? So notice what kind of shape we have right there. That's actually a parallelogram, isn't it? Yep, 